God is doing so much in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's not about me. It's not about us down here this morning. It's about our minister and his family. And sir, while I was toiling over what to share, I got the word continuously. Feed my sheep. Hallelujah. I won't give you a scripture because this has a lot of scriptures in it. But it is very short. Hallelujah. But I want you to take away from this this morning, brothers and sisters. That God is saying something not just to our pastor. But he's saying it also to us. Because a lot of us working ministries yes. that supports and hold up the hands of the pastor and I pray that today you will be blessed also as the deer panted for the water so my soul on it after
this morning, God. Just an empty vessel. But God, it is a vessel that God, you have broken many times. Oh God, you have put me back together and God, you have filled me many times over and over. God, this morning, God, I stand before you, God, not as just, uh, not just Jason, God, but an oracle of you, Lord. I pray, God, that everything that is said from my mouth, God, will be in line with your will. Oh God, we give you thanks this morning. And God, I thank you for your word that God, you have put forth for your people. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In, in John 21 verses 15 to 19 Jesus after his resurrection talking to Peter Peter who is the bold, the, 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 the brash disciple. Remind me a lot of times like Sister Melba. Jesus is ride or die. The one who is who is said, I will lay down my life for you. Hallelujah. The one who denied Christ three times. Hallelujah. Three times Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. And Jesus would, Jesus would say, Peter, do you love me? But Peter would respond each time, yes, you know I love you. Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter answers, yes. You know I love you. Hallelujah. And he said this to all accounts. After each answer from Peter, Jesus responds with, I love you. One, I have three outlines this morning. Very short. Feed my lambs, tend to my sheep, and feed my sheep. If you understand the lamb is the young ones, the ones that, they might be old, but them young. And most times as a shepherd, you have to throw them over your shoulder and carry them because the young ones are so uh, misbehaving. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the true shepherd. Amen. But he has a special calling to pastors to feed his sheep. Jesus' sheep is the body of Christ. Yes. The bride of Christ. Explained in Revelations. This is the calling of a pastor, a preacher, and a teacher to feed Jesus' sheep and feed his church. But what do we feed the church with? Is it with the chicken that is cooking around the back there? Is it the, the good old pork? A.K.A. Trenton. <laughs> or is it with just the cup of soup, sir? Pastors should feed them with the word of God. The unaltered, the un unadulterated, the unfiltered word of God. And for the entirety of what it is, and not just bits and pieces of it. It is, it is seen that many times our pastors come around these podiums and what they try to put across is just wealth. Wealth and prosperity is, 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 is preached uh -huh. to Jesus' wrong. They hated him. Yes. Sir, 
a lot of them will try to prove you wrong even around this podium because their aim is to bring you down sir their aim is to put you in a place where you are thinking about the mission that God has sent you on God where are you with this I don't see those who will hold my hands God those who are called to my side have run from it and God know I'm feeling all alone but God is saying to you this morning that he has never left Use your feelings with anointing. Because you have been anointed to do the work. Hallelujah. There is a reason why in morning times, I don't know if your wife sees it, but every morning when you come out and you stand beside your vehicle, you see a flaming chariot waiting to escort you. There's, there's a reason why that is so because God is saying that he has called you and now not just to, not just to stand in the space but to do the work. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the, the walls you see falling because the walls you see falling is a representation of that city that we had to march around it is because your anointing has reached its its peak in the area yes. and the walls have to fall because there are things that that sir you have to start stepping into thank you for the word jesus They will want to hate you. The question is, why would they want to bring harm to Jesus? Or put it in another way, why would they want to bring harm to Bishop Kurt Davis? Why would they try so hard to prove him wrong? The reason is because he challenged their own righteousness and expose their sins so the word went forth and it turned them over now their roots have been shown and they don't know what to do they have been turned up what they have been for years what they have what they have been doing in this community hallelujah what they have been doing you have just exposed them The word will offend the world system. And it will definitely hurt the unrepentant heart. Hebrews 4, 12 to 13. For the word of God is a living, is living and active. It is sharper than any twedged sword. Piercing to the division of souls and of spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart and no creature is hidden from his sight so all when you do your badness God is going to open Bishop's eye and he's going to see you as you are because bishop is in an atmosphere and he has to keep it he is in an atmosphere that god has pulled him up into now in that atmosphere his eyes the scales are removed and that is why you can come to him to for counseling because he will tell you what it is listen once you're called to be a minister, there are some, there are some gifts that God has to open. Yes. He's going to open your eyes. He's going to open your ears. Yes. You're going to hear about things that nobody now to tell you. So sometimes this morning, morning that you shouldn't just preach part of it. You should preach every bit of it. 
Hallelujah. There are some of the, of the word of God that will cut down a man because he, 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 he is too deep, he's too deep in sin. Hallelujah. If the Bible is the word of God, then how we dare not teach all of it? How can you communicate if you don't say everything that's on your mind? Just like you would be with your partner or your friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, just like how you would be talking to your partner. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we hold back from what we should say. And because of that, the information does come across clearly. Amen. Amen. And so it would be if our pastor stands alone a lectern. Amen. And speaks the word of God, but he speaks a part of it. Hallelujah. A good Bible preaching pastor should feed you in such a way that you will know if you are being fed. But fed what? Truth or lies. Right? How will you know if you are being fed truth or lies? Because we will start to see the manifestation of what is spoken. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that once it is spoken around this altar, it goes across not just to the community, but it goes into the atmosphere, which is the spiritual space. And something is activated. And this happens because God has put a calling on the pastor's life to share and to change yours. So when pastor pulls the cap of the olive oil and he pours it on your head and he says that you are anointed and tomorrow you see that you get up and you start running around the house not even understanding why am I doing this? Why am I lifting up God so much in this house? Because the world went forth. But does not, but doesn't in the same instance it put something heavy on the pastor's mind because he has to continue to speak the truth. Because, brothers and sisters, I tell you this morning, if he stands around this program, this podium, and he speaks a lie, that lie will start to manifest. And that is the awesome power of the words that flows from the lips of a pastor or a teacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are able to discern false teaching by the truth teaching of your pastor. And I am thankful this morning that Brother uh, Reverend Davis has continued to speak the truth. And you know how do I know this? Because I am a part of this, con 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 uh, this congregation. And I have been hit a few times by things that I have thought in my mind, by actions that I have done, and I have been smacked by the word of God. Times and times again, I have been swept off my feet because the word has come forth in such a way that it has crushed even the thought that we have had in our minds. And brothers and sisters, I say to you, when your anointed servant has stepped up to the plate and have continued to share the word day in and day after and after, I pray that you will take heed to these words. But I tell you, don't you know them that they will hate you for it? Hallelujah. In Mark 12, 14, no, no, Matthew 12, 14, Mark 8, 11, Mark 12, 13, to 14, Luke 6 to 11, uh, John 5, 16. Do you know what all of these verses have in common? It talks about sleep that night and God visit him and say, wake up better. Come here, sit on your side and These one and these two are, are, are doing so much 
in the church. But guess what? Let me, let me use the word that Pastor used. Just, 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 just use clemency. Yes. <laughs> use understanding and try to fix the situation. Because there's a, there's a way and there's a way. The shepherd does not want to lose the sheep. He will break the leg. And the leg will, it will hurt. But he's going to put you in comfort. Because he's going to lift you up. And he's going to throw you over his shoulder. And the other sheep are walking the journey. But you are on his shoulder. And he's bearing the weight. Hallelujah. You have to understand that being a pastor is not easy. Sometimes the way that he carries is more than him. It's more than his family. I am glad that Jesus wasn't, wasn't scared to offend anyone. And so as ministers, we have to, hallelujah, bless the Lord, thank you for that, Jesus. <laughs> we as ministers, we have to not be scared of the faces and, and what people say. Because if God talks to you, sir, even if it's the administrative bishop, even if the administrative bishop I'm not saying to be harsh I'm not saying to be bashful but as a shepherd you understand how to use the word again clemency because you have to make the word go across hallelujah Jesus brought forth the truth with, with full conviction even if it offended people if a preacher does not want to present the word in a way that makes you feel guilty for your sin and expose the brokenness of who you are and bring you to the need of grace, to the grace of God, then what are you being fed? If the sermon does not move you to think less of yourself, and to solely rely on God. Then what are you being fed? The prophets in the Old Testament. When they had a message. They came, that came directly from God. It was almost always about destruction. And being scattered from their land. If they don't do not repent. And that's a big if. If they do not repent of their sins. And turn back from pagan worship. Towards the true God. God spoke to the prophets to get the attention of his people. To turn them from their wicked ways and back to him. And often it was harsh. Often times it was a harsh. It challenged them. Oh my God. It, it exposed their sins. And probably it also offended them. But it was an act of mercy and love on behalf of God. Yes. So wait, don't hold back. Because you will, re you will be holding back the mercy and love of God. And the songwriter said the love of God so rich. Rich and pure. It is measureless. Oh my God. Red, why would you hold that back from your people? In Acts 7, Stephen, also known as the first martyr for Christ. Oh God, oh God. A martyr is someone who dies for their faith. He was dragged out of the city and stoned to death. Why? Because he was preaching Jesus Christ. And all that Jesus taught challenged the people and discredited their own righteousness. And it offended them. So they kill him. But this is not them. This is no. You are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. And no matter what darts they throw at you. No matter how them might even try to slash up your tire. No matter if them try to tell you your workplace. 
They want, they want discredit you and chop you from your position. Hallelujah. They can't do it unless God says it. And trust me, if God acts, if God allows that to happen, there's a bigger job for you. Preaching the word of God. Preaching Jesus will offend people. Amen. Amen. But if it's the truth, it needs to be shared. Why does it offend? Because we often delight in our sins and our own self-righteousness. And do not want to give account for our sins. John MacArthur wrote a book that challenged the idea of Christian psychology. When his publisher got a draft, he had a meeting with John MacArthur to discuss the book. The publisher asked John, do you know how many people would be offended by this book? Do you know who will be offended by this book? John then responded with, if we don't offend them, then we cannot correct them. If we do not expose their wrongs, thinking how can we give them the truth they need? The word of God is truth and truth will set you free and truth can, 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 can and does offend. John 8, 31 to 32 says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hebrews 4, 12 to 13 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper as shared earlier, and no creature is hidden from it. Hallelujah. The word cuts our flesh that is filled with sin. The word of God judges our thoughts that is filled with evil. The word of God pierces the spirit that is within us and is not of God. As we look around Jamaica and the world by extension, you can now see how broken it is. How much sin has corrupted the lives of people. How much the devil and his demons have caused so much destruction and how much evil is ruling and reigning in the hurt for us so many. Imagine this. Imagine if pastors taught the word for what it is in such a way that the gospel message goes to the hearers, penetrates their heart, and they go on sharing the word themselves. Imagine that. Imagine how much more peace there would be in the world if the word of God is preached in, with the power and conviction. Imagine how much less crime there would be if the word of God is preached. Imagine how much more less suicide there would be in our in, in be if the word of God is preached. Imagine how much less people would be in delusion of their gender identity if the word of God is being preached, imagine how much more babies would be born and not killed in the womb if the word of God is equipped for every good work. So Rev, if you don't teach the word, if you don't share the word, sir, how will we be equipped to go back and share it the scripture that is breathed out of God is what the world needs to hear. Not inspirational speeches that throws in Christian words, Bible verses, and feel good punchlines. Those will make you rely on yourself. This broken world needs to hear the truth that is able to save soul and convict our sinful nature. In all of us and turn from the entire being to the reliance on God. What kind of pastor would I be? Or what kind of teacher would I be? What kind of pastor would I be if I teach do not cause to cling, cause others to cling to the word of God. For the truth 
and comfort to cling to the Bible for guidance and to cling to the Bible for the beauty of what it is what kind of preacher would I be dare I say I would be a false teacher destined for eternal damnation hallelujah but I'm glad in Galatians 1 8 he said but even if we are we are an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you let him be a curse Rev you understand God has said if you if you teach something different from what I'm saying, no. yes. man, curse you. So that means say that means they're gonna spread like like disease. So we have to understand, brothers and sisters, the the, the, the office of a pastor is one that it, it, it has so much. It has a great what would you call it? The responsibility of a pastor is so high. He has to even even in his mere communication, normal talking, one on one talking, he has to come back to a place where God is center of it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But church, how do we truly appreciate our pastor? In light of today, Pastor's Appreciation Day. Thank yous are great. But if you truly want to appreciate your pastor, you need to wholeheartedly be praying for him. Pray that he, he is bold in speaking the truth. That he will expose sin. Pray that his sermons will be filled with biblical doctrine and theology that reveals the character of God. Pray that he will lead you closer to love and reliance to Jesus Christ. Pray that he will feed you with the word of God that you may be full of truth and light. Pray that you will study the word of man of God and will preach the gospel and teach the Bible. Pray for him to take full of full hold of his calling that is so important and this calling has no place for hesitance or room of second guessing sir yes. none at all yes. you have you have testified about your experience when you try to run from it yes. Yes. and God what God do make a lay down in a bed yes, yes. God made sure that he brought you to a place where you and him will have to rely on him. You don't have the strength. You don't have everything that you need to move and do what you have to do. You have to rely on him. And that was a teaching moment for you, sir. Because it taught you that sometimes you should just lie back and let him have his way. Not many of you, as James said, not many of you should become teachers. My brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged. Hallelujah, with greater strictness. Rev, sometimes sometime I cry because I understand what I'm heading into. I've been to, I've been around so much pastors who cry, and I, I, I think I shared it with Sister Joan one time. My, uh, my pastor, Pastor Palmer's Cross, that him on the ball enough time because of hope, and and for me that was I grew up in his house basically. So you see, for me, I was saying, God, I don't want to go down that road, you know. I will, I will do Sunday school. May we be a Sunday school teacher. I will, I will, I will sing on the choir. And it seems like God's, it's like God's permissive will allow me to be a good teacher, to be a good musician, to be a good singer. <laughs> but then, 
it all brought me back to this place. Because the calling is on your life. And when the calling is on your life, any area that you go into, you are going to be blessed, you know? That is the reason, you know? Once God has called you to do something, He's going to bless you because He cannot take back what He has given.